That's Alex Honnold, everybody. No ropes, no safety net. One of the most famous climbers in the world. Achieving something no human had ever done before. Beyond belief. The greatest climber in the world has achieved the greatest feat in climbing history. Is there anything left to climb after you climb Mount Capitan? Is there anything bigger than that? I mean, there are technically some bigger walls in the world, but they're in very remote places like Greenland. Ultimately, what's at stake with climbing is always your life. You could die in a lot of different ways on a wall. Are you smiling? <coughs> oh. That's you. you Accomplishing see? your biggest life dream has sort of two sides. There was a long time after Alex free sold with El Cap that he seemed to me a little bit lost. In that journey, I saw him be really depressed and frustrated. Mm. Now he's found other ways to give back and keep contributing to the world. I think doing things around climate change is part of that. This is your training. <laughs> the Greenland expedition is unique because it is so remote. A wall that has never been climbed. A place where climate research has barely been done. That lights Alex up in a way that nothing else does. Look at the walls over there. This is, this is crazy. Now I'm starting to get very excited. Yeah. This is, uh, <laughs> definitely feels like the trip is starting. Like, oh, yeah. look at all this rock. It's almost like a fantasy landscape. It's like so big and so remote and so wild. If we manage to climb Ingen Kordelak, it'll be the biggest first ascent I've ever done. Very excited. The first picture I saw of Ingen Kordelak was low resolution, kind of far away. It looked like the scariest wall I've ever seen. It was like swirling black rock. It was kind of like, how about this? Is it, you know, like, couldn't we climb this? I was like, I don't know. But in some ways, that's the best type of climbing objective where you're not totally sure. I'm at a point in my life where I think the expeditions should be about more than just climbing. What makes this expedition so special is that it combines a potential first ascent with groundbreaking climate science. 
When it comes to climate change, Greenland's one of the most important places on the planet. It's gotten about five and a half degrees warmer over the last 40 years. More and more of its ice is melting, raising the sea level around the world. Ingmakortlak is extremely remote, and scientists rarely have an opportunity to study the area around it. So we're gonna take the long way to the bottom of the sea cliff. It'll be an expedition of about 100 miles, gathering critical scientific data in places that no one has been able to get to before. You know, I've definitely always cared about the world around me. I would say that I haven't always had the opportunity to actually do something useful. What's wonderful about a trip like this is that, you know, we have the right team in place to actually do meaningful work as we go climbing. polar bear territory now, yeah? So there's some things we have to be aware of, things we have to practice. Is to deter the bear, not shoot the bear. All Perfect. we do is about scaring the bear. All the way back, yeah. That's it. So aim for something like the grass. Whoa. Feel the kick, huh? Yeah, definitely feel <laughs> the kick. Hopefully this is the last time you'll shoot. Imagine getting eaten by a bear. Like, that's crazy. But I don't, you know, I'm like, has anyone looked behind us recently? It's like, are there any bears around? Ingmakortelak is about 4,000 feet tall. I have no idea what the rock will be like. <laughs> Which is why I've asked two of the best climbers in the world to join me. What, are you doing two? Thank you, I mean. Whoa. Mikey Schaefer he has done first ascents on all the major peaks in Patagonia. Maybe the most experienced first ascensionist on the team. I did my first big wall before I could legally drive. I've always been drawn to doing first ascents. It's not like a conquering thing. It is far from that. I could care less about conquering mountains. It's this interesting blend of artistic creation yet extremely technical exploration. Strong, Hazel. Hazel Finlay is a professional climber from the UK. Hazel is really experienced with this sort of first ascent, exploratory adventure rock climbing. I started climbing when I was about six years old. My dad taught me how to climb. And I think I just sort of found my love for adventure and that's what I've been doing ever since. I do have a lot of experience climbing sea cliffs, so <laughs> I've got to kind of combine the experience of big walling and sea cliff climbing. All the way left, way left. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> that was really good. That was a really good warm up. Yeah, you call it a warm up. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is so experienced a climber. Out, I'm out. <laughs> she just tapped out. <laughs> Walked away? Yeah. He's probably spent more time on rock than almost anyone in the world, I think. Yeah, all the way nice, Alex. And then the other reason he's so good is obviously because he can keep calm, really stay cool, and not freak out when <laughs> he's a thousand meters off the deck with no rope. That's exciting. Do you hear the water running? But it's amazing to hear how much water is going through the system. From the scientific perspective, the most important member of the team is Heidi Silvestre. 
my biggest passion is ice. To study how glaciers and ice sheets react to climate change. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's a really big hole. Yeah, let's go and take a look. This is pretty loud. Oh, wow. This is giant. Whoa. Yeah, look at this. Look how deep it goes. Woo. This is a big one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, this is... right here, you can see like all the way into the hole. Deep oh, it? yeah, I see it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's deep enough that it just turns black. So yeah. It's pretty far. <laughs> this huge hole is called a moulin. It acts like a drain funneling meltwater to the base of the glacier. This is the abyss. It's all pretty big and pretty, uh, pretty intimidating. This moulin should allow us to figure out what's happening beneath the glacier. So we're going to rappel down into it. Glaciers are rivers of ice. Normally, they flow slowly, pulled by gravity down towards the ocean. But the more water beneath the glacier, the faster it can move. It's pretty much like when you take an ice cube and you make it slide over a thin layer of water, it will slide so much faster. I want to find out if there's enough water underneath the glacier to make it speed up. I'm definitely more used to climbing up rock than down into ice. But this is a rare opportunity to help Heidi get the data that she needs. Very few people have dared to enter into these holes. It's really one of the most dangerous environments on Earth. Aldo Kane is here for safety and logistics, We're here to help the team make sure that we don't kill ourselves. Yeah, and can bring it back out. We're trying to mesh frontline hardcore adventure with frontline hardcore science. You know, they go hand in hand. Honestly, he's just so striking and handsome. I just feel like he must be very capable. My wife looked him up on Instagram before the trip and was like, wow, you know, like, Tell me about what it's like to be with Aldo. I was like, okay. Clean this section here and then run the ropes straight over that edge. Oh, it's not bad. It's a good toss. When you're standing on top of the moulin, you can hear crap, crap. It's like gunshots going off, and that's the ice moving. Watch out, watch out. Heidi has these little cylinders called pisometers. If we can drop them down to the bottom of the moulin, they'll tell us how much water is down there. The more water, the faster the glacier is moving and melting. I'm gonna go down a little bit. See what we got, huh? Mm-hmm. 
It has measured about 100 kilopascals, which actually means that there was about 10 meters of water above it. 30 feet of water is a big pool at the bottom of a, of a hole like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. This much water under the glacier can make it slide down the valley and melt faster at lower altitudes. Our results mean that this huge river of ice is now one more we need to keep tabs on. When you know that around the world, on coastlines, there are about 700 million people, you understand that actually what is happening to Greenland matters to the rest of the world. Close enough that if you slip, you'll go into the yeah, abyss. Yeah, then I'll die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, you probably wouldn't die. It'd be terrible, though. We're still more than 70 miles from in the cork lag. Our route will take us across the Renland Ice Cap, which is a huge expanse of ice that's more than 6,000 feet above sea level. We want to see if climate change is having an effect on it. But to get up there, we'll have to make a first ascent of a huge rock face that we're calling the Pool Wall. What do we think? This is a lot bigger than I expected. One thing to be inspired by walls, another thing to actually climb it. That looks very dangerous. It's hard to know how far up we can get. I mean, the pool wall could be one of those lifetime achievement routes. That's a 1,500 foot Arctic big wall that's unclimbed. That's like pretty serious. What's going to be even harder is that we have to get the whole team up the wall, including Adam and Heidi who have basically never climbed before. Seeing it with my own eyes is actually pretty scary. Intimidating looking up at this like, what's that, four or 500 meters of mountain kind of on top of you. But I think I found the best camping spots here. So. Oh, it's so windy. Can you see inside the tent? It's, it's going to be luxurious. Pro tip, though. Put stuff in your tent before you set it up. No, it seems OK. Doesn't fly away. Yeah, it's here. Oh, no, no, no! Oh, God. So long! Oh, it could be gone. What did you say up there, Mikey, about pro tip? Oh, you found it? Yeah. Oh, great success. It's in a lake, but it's already dry. Pool Wall is an important rock face from a geological perspective. During the last ice age, it was buried under the ice sheet. Then, 11 and a half thousand years ago, temperatures rose the ice melted and the rock face we see today emerged. If we can discover how fast that ice receded from pool wall in the past, we can improve our projections of how quickly Greenland's ice is likely to melt in the future. But to make these projections, we need to get rock samples from all the way up pool wall. Let me tell you, the scientists are so excited to get samples from pool wall because they simply cannot do this. Mm. 
Every wall has its own unique flavor, or dangers. It's hard to know until you're actually on it. And nobody's ever climbed this wall before. Okay, I'm climbing. Hi, Alex. He keeps dropping a lot of rocks, so my guess is that it's a bit chossied. Arctic rock can be a real challenge. Water gets into the cracks and then freezes and expands, forcing the rock apart. The rock is just a dangerous place to climb especially with the rest of the team below you because it means things are constantly falling on people. Big rock! Hazel, Mikey, and I will take turns leading. Yeah, she's doing it. Finding the safest route up the wall for the team. Well, I'm not finding this way. There are a couple good feet that make that thing okay. We've got 24 hours of daylight, so we're going to push hard whenever the weather's good. Getting a little tiring, huh? Yeah. Ugh. Alex, Mikey, and Hazel are up there, and they're pushing the route, probably to at least the halfway point. And I've just started following the climbers up. I'm off the way, Mikey! This is not great. Hazel's encountered a section of very poor rock. He's up there trying to find a way to tiptoe around some very loose blocks. From here, it looks like once you transfer to the right, you're kind of in there. Yeah, but I don't think I can transfer to the right without standing on any of this. I believe in you. I could see the rock was only attached to the wall by this very small piece. If this small piece of rock broke, then this huge flake would come out of the rock. I don't actually think I can get around this. You have to be really careful. It's not just about, oh, can I get past it? It's just there's going to be huge consequences if I knock it off. You would fall yourself. You would most likely cut the rope, and you'd probably also kill your bee layer. Oh, this is scary. It's, it's really not good. Well, what about using face holds past it, like little edges for the feet, but just kind of tiptoe around? Yeah, that's what I'm going to try and do. I've got you good. Harsh is fully standing on the scary block. Yeah, Hazel? I think as climbers, you kind of learn to take life and death decision making and make it normal. Oh, yeah. Hi, nice, Hazel. Often it's my mind that gets me up roots rather than my strength. <laughs> that was cool. This part's particularly bad. As opposed to the rest, it was only pretty bad. When 
Mikey's up there dealing with some sort of terrible, terrible climbing. But uh, but at least we're making upward progress, just carrying along. Oh, got some really cold hands right now. <sighs> 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 Better rock to the right, and there's another crack over there. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. You all right? Yeah. I'm halfway down the pitch anyways, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. So I think you're gonna be fine. You can't say I didn't go for it. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm giving you full credit. You're gonna give me full, like, he didn't, he wasn't a weenie up there. No, no, you're not a weenie up there. You really got after it. There's definitely some pressure to figure this section out. Or else we'll have to give up on the route and our chance to get up onto the ice cap. Oh, sweet mercy. Is it hard or loose? Both. I'm gonna like need a minute to process to try to like see where things go. I'm watching. How high do you think they are? Mm, like 500, 600 feet. It's a bit scary to think of going up. It looks like it's about to fall on my face. What's happening there? Do you see? Yeah, it looks it's a little. The Look. What is he holding on to? Well, yeah. Scary That's stuff. Scary, huh? I'm watching Alex follow this crack. He's just hanging there, hundreds of feet up this wall. And then he does this huge move left into space. That was a risky move for sure, but it's got us to a crack that goes a long ways up. Happy birthday, dear Adam. Happy birthday to you. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we have a gift for you. Happy 40th. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like a malt. Oh, I smell it from here. It's whiskey. Uh, Water of life. It. No, no. <laughs> it it, no. Did you get any? Yeah. I have. Oh, it's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like, what? It's good. But you have to sing for yourself in Greenlandic. Inuishi <laughs> Inu is young, Ninita Kusuta, Tamata Nuan Napu. Utoxio Tokuna. Today is the day, today is the day I'm going big wall climbing. <laughs> with a bunch of pros. Anxiety is definitely here. I must say I didn't sleep very well. And I can feel a, a sense of nervousness in the team as well. 
We're adding two more people into the mix. There's two more people exposed to rock fall. There's two more people exposed to making a mistake on the rope. The consequences of a mistake are ultimately fatality. Mikey, I'm going to start going up. You guys are going to go to the doctor. I'm going to go We've been here for a week. We haven't seen any wildlife. And just minutes before we start going up, we see two ravens playing in the wind. It's really, really beautiful. I'm hoping this is a good omen, but I have to admit, I'm pretty nervous. So are you just going with one foot like that? Yeah. Claire, my key. Thank you. Is that in below? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the whole party's below now. How you getting on, Heidi? <laughs> they make it look so easy when they go up these walls. Nice. <laughs> Bam. That took a while, yeah. That's okay. You made it. It was uh, pretty hard and I was really exhausted. Uh, should we uh, choose a spot up here for core sampling? This could be yeah. a good one, yeah. Now let's do some drilling. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> These rock samples will inform us how quickly is Greenland going to lose its ice? How quickly is the water going to rise? That's a big sample, actually. That is a great sample. That's really good. First time I've used a chisel on rock. But... Oh, there it is. Yay! Yay! We have a core. It is good to see that, you know, the cores are starting to come out of the rock. And hopefully I'll be a bit faster on the ropes as well. <laughs> By that time. Yeah, a long ways to go to the top. <laughs> It looks super hard up there. I mean, from now on, it's just totally vertical. Whoa, listen to that. Do you see these death dagger icicles? The sun has come out. It means that all of the icicles that have formed over the last few days have started to fall off. Lots of deathsicles coming off the top. Ice, ice. Hide your hands. Dagger. Look at that thing. This is treacherous. Oh, rope! Head hit it! Oh! Ow! Oh. Oh. Dang it. It's right on the bridge of my nose. Like, is that blood? Yeah, you're bleeding. Coming. It's actually sliced you. It's like a little knife wound. It's definitely way better to get hit by ice than rock. If that had been a rock that size that hit me, it for sure would have broken my nose at least. If not, put a hole straight through my face. Did I get most of the blood off? Yeah. Does it hurt? I'm definitely like a little sore, but. I think the thing with the ice fall is that it's really scary but there's nothing you can do about it. You either give up on the climb entirely or you play through it. Combat medic Aldo freaking taking care of me. Classic, we're like, oh, better conditions today. Like, nope, different set of bad conditions. It's always something in Greenland. I'm now about a thousand feet up. I've made a decision not to look down. And if I do, I'm worried I'll be paralyzed by fear. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> okay, Heidi! Horizontal ground! <laughs> 
Nice try, Bert. Yeah. Wow. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> And the view is pretty nice, huh? It's, it's beautiful. I, I got a bit scared, actually. It's hard to imagine, but you're going to spend the night attached to a thin tent made of fabric that is only secured by one bolt stuck into the rock. Oh, it's so much cozier than being outside. And it's nice to get out of the wind. Yeah, it's so much warmer. Are we taking helmets off? Well, I am. When I look at the window, I'm like, what? <laughs> Where is the floor? <laughs> I'm glad that tomorrow is the second and last day. <laughs> See you Bon nuit. When I woke up, I didn't even think I'd be able to get my climbing shoes on. I was so cold. Oh. Remember to watch out for that one flake, Hazel. Yeah. I was so impressed that she just put on her things and went. I was like, that is it's like it's a hard woman. <laughs> We're about 900 feet up. To summit, we have to get through the steep top section of the wall. We only have thin cracks to follow. Plus the rock is constantly crumbling. It's really difficult to get good gear. Some people might think that climbers are just cut from a different cloth and that they're just comfortable in these places. But it really comes through practice. And I think that the biggest growth for me has actually been learning how to manage that fear. making hand finger locks big enough. <sighs> okay. <sighs> it's just so That's kind of the last hard pitch for sure. Hello. Yeah. This thing. You like it? Just keep coming up. Are you enjoying it? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was direct. <laughs> <laughs> Not for you. Not really. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Adam. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for the talk. Yeah. Adam, we're thinking we're going to name the route Two Ravens. 
Good name. Yeah, perfect, huh? huh? Good name, yeah. Huh? You it saw is. the Ravens? Yeah, yeah seriously. For you and Heidi? Yeah. yeah. Two Ravens flying up the wall? Yeah. Pretty exciting, huh? Oh, yeah. That's a good name, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At that moment where they said they wanted to name it Two Ravens, I felt honored because I couldn't have done it at all without them. Final pitch. Like, it's just put it. Okay, it's off. for a practice ball. Practice run, this is like my retirement run. How you feeling? Oh, work. Yay! Yeah. yeah. Cool. You Ravens. I'm starting to think the Ingercord lag, which is three times higher than the pool wall, might be a bit of an undertaking. So next up, we'll have to try to find somewhere flat to camp. But we still have a long ways to go before we sleep tonight. Finally, we've made it onto the Renland Ice Cap, a 42-mile-wide reservoir of ice. It will be the highest and coldest part of the expedition. This will be the first time anyone's tried to cross this ice cap on foot. Our plan is to ski northwest for 40 miles, taking measurements for Heidi's research as we go. Then, we'll descend a glacier to the fjord below. This is my first expedition as a father. And I do miss my daughter. It's a pretty long trip to be away from family. And it's certainly gonna be hard on my wife to have to be a single parent for six weeks. Having a daughter has really made me think more about the future. And of course, the future of the planet. I think about it a lot. The first year that I started earning more income than, than I needed, I started donating a third of my income to help fund solar projects around the world. We're in the midst of a crisis, and we need to actually help change the world as quickly as possible. Sleep well. Good thing we got skis, huh? So we have here two different radars. This will help us to measure ice thickness. It works almost like a sonar. It enables us to see what's underneath our feet. Okay, we all ready? ready? Yeah. Okay, walking. Measuring the thickness of the ice will help us calculate how much water the Rainland ice cap holds. We want to understand how sea levels might rise if temperatures keep going up and all of this melts. It's not as if I've ever wanted to be a polar explorer. You know, I'm a rock climber for a reason, but in this case, to spend you know, between four days and a week going somewhere that no one's ever been to help Heidi for science. I mean, it's rare to have that kind of opportunity in life. Stay a bit more on your right, if you can. How's this beat? Yeah, that's good, yeah. Okay.
Do you want to stop, Alex? Yeah, do we stop for a sec? Sure. We are walking or skiing on ice that is 120,000 years old. This ice has seen the last ice age and even the period before that. The deepest ice here is over 2,000 feet down. This ice cap holds more than 350 billion tons of fresh water, enough to submerge the entire island of Manhattan under almost four miles of water. It's so difficult to get any bearings in this light. So we're just skiing in on, on the bearing now because it's kind of white out, but you can see the relief of that crevasse there. Crevasses are the biggest hazard on the ice cap. They're deep cracks in the ice, some going hundreds of feet. In this flat light, they're tough to spot until you're actually on top of them. And if you fall in one whilst you're pulling a sled, then you're in deep trouble. So crevasses that way, so we'll, we'll basically head yep. that direction. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, that's what I was like. I think we really want to get out of here, huh? Yeah. All right, you're bang on course there, Mikey. Navigating in white out is never fun. A landmark would be great. So difficult when there's absolutely nothing to focus on. What's the plan? I mean, my goal for the day is get all the way across the ice cap. OK, I think we should stop. Are you kidding? Basically, we need to make a decision about whether we push on or not. The fact, from my point of view, is that Mike and I looked at the map and we're heading straight into the center of that crevasse field. I know that it's probably pretty dangerous. Is it safe to push on? Or is it better to stop and put up camp and maybe we get better vis later on? We do have 24 hour daylight. When the vis is good, we crack on again. No, we could also rope up and just keep, keep going through. I don't think roping up doesn't make it much safer. Because well, we can't see it. All, it's all, already the hazard is already there. I'm, I'm in on on camping here. Mm, absolutely, yeah. Same for me. I think it's totally unsafe to continue. Yeah. With Alex, it's, you know, it's a little different because he has so much self confidence and so much ability. It's a little harder for me to blindly sort of trust what he says to do. What's the the group vote? I don't think we should move right now. Yeah. We'll go and probe an area for camp, and then we'll whack up some tents, and then we'll just ride it out for a bit. The story of this trip is basically don't fight the weather. Get the tents up, get dinner on, and wait it out. This is like, this is insane. It's Here, I brought you so dinner. Deep. Oh, you have? Oh, that's so if nice. So now it's probably a little bit cold, <laughs> but. Are you proud of your hole? Yeah, but I really want to dig another one here. Uh, <laughs> I could start, but. So then, yeah, if you want, if you're keen. Here, actually, let me start while you eat. Are you sure? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. just so you can relax for a minute. I can't even get out now. <laughs> yeah, do you need a hand? Is that why you didn't come out for dinner? Because you didn't know how to get out of the hole? <laughs> I was just stuck, yeah. I don't think this will take me that long, actually. You see, I'm making pretty good progress. This far north, this high up, I'm expecting the snow to be more or less pristine.
this is like the ultimate snow pit. And in between the two holes is a very fine wall of snow that will kind of reveal itself when the light is shining through it. OK, cover me in. That could be your bed tonight. This could be my bed. <laughs> Oh, it's pretty cool, actually. You can just really see the layers. Nice. It's like very clear lines. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. OK. All right, let's do that. Oh, oh, this is great. I mean, what I'm seeing here is a very clear picture of the snow pack. The depth of this snow pit spans a period of about 12 months. And every time we have one of these layers, it means that the rain and ice cap was melting. I was hoping just to find beautiful snow <laughs> without any melt, but actually melt is happening all the time throughout the year up here. This is really concerning. I think there's a good chance that the rain and ice cap is melting faster and making more of a contribution to sea level rise. And that contribution is only going to increase in the future. Monet. It's been two days, but the weather's finally clear. Now we can get a good look at where we are. I'm actually just going straight up from camp. Kind of scary that there's one right there. Yeah, I'm glad we stopped eventually. <laughs> yeah. Big holes, big holes. <laughs> A little bit of death. <laughs> we are literally surrounded by crevasses. I mean, these are insane. Yeah, I think based on that, Mikey, you and I should be roped up at least. Yeah, right. it seems reasonable. We're slowly dropping altitude. Yeah. No, I think it's all downhill now. Yeah. We've got weather on our side. The wind has died down. We're heading in the right direction, and we can see the fjord. Keep moving, that's the main thing. I'm going around. Someone's gonna get dragged into a crevasse because they've got heavy pulpa. No, I know, I think this is kind of crazy. <laughs> you said go fast. Yeah. I know, but I didn't mean quite that much speed. Oh, God, yeah, finally Alex is like, oh, that was a little too much. Well, it just started to look a little, a little quick at the bottom there. It's such a relief to see our support team. We're going to get a ride to our final objective. We made it. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, this is, this is cool. It's so nice to be moving, not under oh my our God. power. <laughs> this, this is pure joy.
Ingmakortalak is still almost 30 miles from here. And the only way to get there is up a long, deep fjord. This landscape is one of the more beautiful things I've ever seen. It's, it's pretty incredible. Wow. This fjord is like just absolutely magical. Yeah, honestly, I can't believe the amount of ice there is here. It makes me sick when I see this. Yeah. We're all looking at this landscape and thinking it's amazing. But where we see beauty, Heidi sees something completely different. This is all ice that is, of course, being lost by the glaciers. And it's not a good sign when you see so many icebergs floating around. Yeah, no, it's, it's quite scary, actually. Yeah. I mean, when I see what's around me today, my heart shrinks. The Greenland ice sheet contains enough ice to increase sea levels globally by about 24 feet. This is our future, and it's also our demise. If we save the Arctic, we will save ourselves. It's taken more than three weeks, but we finally made it to our main objective. This is like the craziest wall. I know, it looks, it looks evil. Ingmakortalak is growing in front of us, but it's also, I think, growing in our minds. They are the best climbers in the world, and I feel that they're totally unstoppable. But actually, when they were on the boat looking at the face for the first time, they felt human. That's so big. Oh my gosh, guys. Sweet, what do we sign up for? Ingmakortalak. A giant 4,000 foot sea cliff and one of the biggest unclimbed rock faces on the planet. What's the obvious line? Can you see one? Nothing yet. Sure. No. So far, I'd say nightmare on all sides. Like yeah. everything just looks terrifying from this angle. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely looks bigger than El Cap. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger now, Cap. Tola. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. It's nearly three times the height of the Empire State Building, and nearly a thousand feet taller than El Capitan. Oh man, this thing is absolutely huge. There's just not a lot of cliffs this big in the world. I don't know how we're gonna do this. Wow, should we try and scramble up a bit? Wow, it's so smooth. Okay, I'm gonna start. Don't let me die. Wait, 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 wait. I could only speed out so quick, so just don't run. I'm gonna move back over and go across this other right. That's 30 meters. Oh, wow. Yeah. We can't just start up one line and be like, oh, this isn't the route. And if we chose the wrong one, it turns into like, you know, a bunch of loose rock and awful climbing, like, th then we're just done. 
I think that top section could be so hard. Way up high? Yeah. Yeah. It looks so steep from here, doesn't it? Yeah. None of the options look easy. The middle section is blank and featureless. And the right-hand section looks like a death route. So we're going with the left side, which seems to be the safest way up. All the routes wind up on the head wall, a thousand feet of vertical rock, which will definitely be the hardest part of the climb. Get him off, Hazel. OK, I'm climbing on green. Uh, there's Hazel climbing below me and Mikey. Everybody's cruising. The view's starting to improve. More icebergs, crazy glaciers, epic big wall. We're doing it. Very exciting. How does it look above Alex? Yeah, it's really hard to decide where to go. In classic style, this crack is all rotten, like, all soft and... Is it pretty chesty? Yeah, it's like really sandy. It's like the first, uh, like, bad rock we've experienced, really. Rock, oh, rock, 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 rock. Oh, Holy shizzle. That is heinous. So the loose rock poses a couple problems. The initial danger is just as the lead climber, he could pull a block off and hurt himself. And then as we progressed up the wall, it's sort of just a train, like, you can always hit the person below you. Because, like, you could just knock a block off now and it could kill me. You know yeah, I mean? totally, like, totally. If there are multiple members on the team, whoever's furthest back is at the most danger of rock fall, because there's more things bouncing and they've been going further, they're traveling faster. OK. I'm off, Aldo! Just shout if you kick anything off. OK. You know, if a medium-sized rock hits you from 50 feet away, it just kind of hurts. If it hits you from 500 feet away, then you'll be dead. I'm like standing on just teetering chaws. Rock! Oh, rock. Rock, Aldo! Huh? To use climbing terminology, it's a massive choss pile. Choss is basically lots of rock and gravel and things. It's just continually shedding or exfoliating down the fall line. Don't particularly want to be hanging around, do you? I'm below my cane, so most of the rocks are coming down my way. And that's actually what I think is worrying Mikey and Hazel more than, than anything else, is that they kick something off which comes down and kills me. This thing is uh... Yeah, no. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, we're fully like, this is. We're this mountaineering. Is, we're doing something, but it's not super safe. That's for sure. <laughs> Do you want to lead this one? I don't have shoes. More than a week ago, we had to leave a lot of our climbing gear at the top of the pool wall. The weather has been so bad up there that our support team hasn't been able to recover it yet. So that's why our whole Jumarin ascending rope setup is a little uh, improvised. Alex is the only person on the team with climbing shoes right now. I mean, he's the strongest member of the team, so it's lucky that it's his shoes that we have and not anyone else's. But at the same time, it would be really good if we could share the weight of the leading.
What's scary with a place like this is that if one iceberg starts to roll or to calve, it can really trigger a domino effect and, and everything starts moving very quickly. Inmikortilak is just a few miles away from one of the largest and fastest moving glaciers in the Arctic, the Dogard Jensen. It's a huge 40 mile long glacier flowing from Greenland's vast inland ice sheets down into the sea. There's so much ice, crazy. It's like navigating through a minefield, like yeah. <laughs> making sure you don't trigger anything that's gonna collapse on you. Past data has shown us that the Dogard Jensen Glacier loses about 10 billion tons of ice per year. This is a natural process. All glaciers move, but when ocean temperatures warm, they can start to melt from below, which makes them speed up, have more icebergs, and contribute more to sea level rise. The future of New York, London, and Shanghai is directly linked to glaciers like this one. Glaciers for the south and slightly further north are now losing much more ice than they were 40 years ago. I want to find out if the Dogard Jensen is following the same wearing trend. Oh, they look good, huh? Yeah. Let me see. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to see what there is on this. Two time-lapse cameras have taken pictures of the glacier every hour over the entire duration of the experiment. By tracking features like crevasses and rocks, we can use the time-lapse images to determine how much the glacier has moved. And from that, we can work out if it's moving faster than when it was last studied two decades ago. No, it is actually some of the better climbing. Well, yeah, but like, I mean, the gray rock is like full of death blocks. I don't know what all we got here. Something? Uh, I'm on this lead line. What do you think is safer? Let's go with the blade device for now. Why? So that you don't drop me to my Dude, death. If you really think that that has anything to do with the overall safety of what we're doing, yeah, yeah it helps. You have. Poor risk assessment at the moment. Like Somebody is that really has... grumpy. I'm just saying. Get no, dude, I'm not being device. grumpy. I'm being real. Like this is definitely like the chassiest thing I've ever climbed. I mean, do you know how many rocks have just missed my head? Yeah. Ideally, when you're climbing with people, you need them to be able to empathize and relate with how you're feeling. You got it. Oh. oh, rock, 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 yeah. rock. Yeah. It's so sketchy. This is terrifying. Dude, yeah, Alex. I know. It's like literally getting shot at by your buddy. Alex is not doing a great job at understanding the experience that the rest of us are having. So many, so many times, man, you can dodge rocks and stay psyched. Right. That's fair. I mean, everybody's bummed because it's really hard work. Oh, man. It's so hot in the pro shoes. They don't have any other gear, so they're just improvising random bits and bobs to slide their way up the rope. I mean, they're basically just following me like pack animals. I mean, in general, I felt like I was being pretty careful. But, I mean, I'm sure I've knocked some rocks. Well, yeah, I mean, rocks have been coming down the whole time. I'm off the way, Mikey! Okay, you're off! We're poised to do the first ascent of one of the biggest unclimbed walls in the world. 
it's a great opportunity as a climber, but if anybody doesn't want to do that, then I mean, that's, you know, it's like we're all here by choice. You can come up on the way when you're ready. Yeah, one sec. So yeah, what Benny, honest take right now of this whole thing. Oh God. Here, if you hand that to me, I can. I think I got it. I mean, those last two pitches were. Are you ready, bud? I mean, there's just no way to like, I'm just struggling to figure out how to make it remotely safe. Like there's more loose stuff than there is solid stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm mean, not gonna lie, I'm, I'm pretty borderline at this point. Yeah. Like, it just, this is not like what I signed up for, you know? Mikey has a lot of experience under his belt. And if he's saying that his intuition is that he shouldn't be on the wall, then I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't be on the wall either. You know, it's making me think that it's riskier than I thought. I feel like morale is really low today. Yeah, no, morale's tanking at the moment. Just so you know. It's just the danger. Well, what do you think we should do to uh, make it better? That's the problem. Some climbs are just really dangerous. It doesn't matter how good you are. And over the years, I've lost quite a few friends to climbing. You know, more than I can count on my hands and my feet. And at this point, it's hard to be optimistic that the climbing's gonna improve at all. It is more of the same, if not harder up there, because the head wall looks steep. It's like, I don't want to die. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Oh, you survived another day. I did, yeah. Anyway, should we uh, go down and join yeah. our friends on the boat? Um, Alex, you know, he does yeah. have the confirmation bias, right? Like, nothing's essentially bad happened to him. Piece of soup. Joke. Cool, I'll see you at the bottom. Okay. And it is how some things get done. Should we chat about our future? Yeah. Love chatting about our future. Mikey, do you want to start and let the team know where you're at? What are you thinking? There isn't enough value in it for me to like continue on and like, I just think that to me, there's like risks that are going to be like too hard to mitigate continuing on. It's like you don't want to climb a giant sea cliff? No, yeah, I mean. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's, what, if, what if you go first the whole way? I was definitely hoping that like, Conditions were going to improve, and they have definitely not improved. You don't think so? I thought the rock was slowly getting a little better. I mean, that last pitch, you know, pitch you led, you like changed course because you're like, oh, these are like Jenga blocks, and I'm like, yeah, those are proper Jenga blocks. Yeah. And even but the they train didn't fall you... off. Yeah, but like they do fall off, you know, like. It's just too bad because you've already taken so much risk up there. It's yeah, a but, shame to not that all the But that wall. is always a poor reason to take more. Yeah, that's that's And true. I would be more disappointed in myself if something happened while I was up there, then the disappointment I'm gonna have by not going, I think. Mikey is an old friend of mine, and we've been climbing partners for a long time. I just worry that he won't be as satisfied if he's not actually climbing the wall. But like, are you sure you're happy with that? Cause... Yeah, 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 no, I, I you, know. you know, and I've never been one to like, like dwell on my decisions. Alex's biggest concern is that I would be disappointed in retrospect. So that was was very nice of him. What uh, what do you think, Hazel? I think for me is I need to know that like you're thinking clearly about it, you know? Because it's really cool how positive and psyched you are, and that's one of the reasons I really like climbing with you. But then sometimes it's like, are you being so optimistic you're not actually seeing? I mean, do you what's feel going like it's on? been been too too optimistic so far? Yeah, yeah, and 
like I'm definitely more risk adverse than you. And so I think it, it would just be cool to like hear from you that you're listening to that, mm -hmm. you know, and that, you know, I just, I just want to make sure we're on the same page, basically. I, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah. I mean, we definitely want to be on the same, same page. I mean, I guess to me, the thing is, are we all, I don't want to sound hoagie, but like when we all go home, I want to make sure we're all still friends, everyone's happy, yeah. no one's yeah. like bummed of decisions, nobody, you know. No, I mean, like, I think we're, this, we're making okay? decisions and we've yeah. talked it through a lot. And... But you still need, you need, I think you need to tell me that like, this is going to be <laughs> good of that, you know? You're not the sole partner. <laughs> so I would say that now suddenly your opinion carries a lot of weight because if you don't feel comfortable, then the party's over. Overall, I still want to climb that wall. I have that pull to have the adventure. I want to know what that head wall's like. So it was really important to kind of sit down with Alex and be like, look, I'm your only teammate now. And so, <laughs> I think he got it in his own way. <laughs> Mikey is right that it's a dangerous place. But for me and Hazel to climb one of the biggest unclimbed walls in the world, something that hasn't been done, that's big, that's meaningful, it's worth it. Oh, the boat's here. What do you got there, Aldo? One bag of climbing kit. We got some stuff at least. Oh. Hello, oh, shoes. Yeah, my shoes. Is this your helmet? Yeah, my helmet. We'll see you guys in a few days then. Nice, nice. nice. Up the, yeah. Up the yeah. trip, huh? Yeah. Bye. Bam. Bam. Uh, I'll see you soon. Okay. Yeah. I'll right, see you guys in a bit. <laughs> Bye. This is it. It's just me and Hazel and Ingma Kortelak. Climbing the steep final headwall is definitely going to be a challenge, especially if it's just the two of us. Did you go first, or...? No, you, you should go. So exciting putting my shoes on. The first time in a really long time. Oh my god, we're climbing. Good progress through the afternoon. Getting closer and closer to the head wall. Yeah, it's sad to not have Mikey up here, huh? Yeah, it's sad. We're missing Mikey. Oh, this actually is a great place to camp. This is amazing. We should definitely stay right here. Yeah, it's pretty flat. This is, yeah, this is really flat and really beautiful. Look at the wall. Oh, you've got your life raft? Is that because we're on a sea cliff? <laughs> if I fall off, I'll float down, and then I'll float back to camp. Oh, that'd be nice. That looks pretty comfy. How do you feel? Yeah, pretty good, yeah. Now I just need my sleeping bags. I absolutely love sleeping on walls. It's one of my favorite things about big walling. Can I take a picture? Yeah. It's this moment to actually enjoy the wall and be present and calm with the wall without wanting to just be climbing up it. That looks sick. How's your bed, Alex? This is actually really comfy. I've gotten pretty, I just used the rope to prop up my head more and it's very comfortable. What a nice spot.
Oh, it's so nice to wake up with some sunshine. Okay, you're ready. Take us away, Hazel. All righty. We've still got a good 1,400 feet between us and the summit. We're traveling light with limited supplies. There's no plan B. We're going to the top. Yeah, who knows what this head wall will hold. The blank face that you want to go towards is looking blanker and blanker as we get closer to it. Two pitches later, and we're finally starting into the hardest part of the climb. The head wall. It just looks so scary, though. All the features are big blocks waiting to fall off. If you touch it with your rope, if you touch it with your foot, it just showers loose rocks down. The whole mountain is like a stack of cards because it's just stacked blocks teetering on top of each other and it feels like if any one of them goes, then they're all gonna crumble. Like normally you climb a little bit, you might be a little scared, but then when you finish, you're safe. But on this, there just are hardly any points where you feel safe. Okay. We just feel kind of on edge the entire time. How'd it look? It's just hard to know exactly where I want to go. Yeah. I'm thinking about going left into that corner and then up through some cracks and kind of like aiming for the left side of the big roof. Okay. As we get higher up the wall, we realize that the whole summit is guarded by these big overhanging roofs. And so the root finding starts to become a lot more important, where we have to nail the right way to navigate through this maze. There's the little tower right above us. Like, you see that little, like, block? Yeah. Basically, I think it's, like, a not a terrible place to try to tackle this roof. But for literally hours, as we're slowly moving up towards this, you know that it might not work. Just not really knowing whether or not it will dead end. I mean, should I just go easy as possible line, like as if I was soloing? What would that be, left? Yeah, just take the corners. Do we think right is better? Yeah, I think right leaves our options open for longer. Uh, little rocks, rocks. Whoa. We switch, and Hazel takes the lead. Uh, that's a really good pitch you did so far. Halfway? Yeah. You'll catch me, though, if I fall, right? Well, these ledges will probably catch you. I think you can just go left and follow that big corner. I was just going to place a piece, but I'll suck it off. Yeah. Terrifying. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, I can't put any gear behind that. Oh, I don't even want to hold that. Mm. It's hard to describe how hard it is to do something like this. Nice, Hazel. You really don't know if the next pitch is going to be possible. It's like not many footholds that aren't going to break. Just tread lightly. You really don't know if like your next handhold is going to break. How does it look trending up and right? It's just like pretty blank, protectionless for a ways. We only have enough food and water until the end of the day, so we really need to get to the top of that wall. You should probably try to build an anchor in the next, you know, 20. Yeah, I'll try and aim for those ledge systems. 
The only viable route is sideways across a blank section. But this wall, it's crumbling with every move we make. It's really sketchy. But it's the only option we have. Now I just have a terrifying traverse. You're doing great. Oh my god, it's so scary! <gasps> Nice job, Hazel. Yay! Finally. Hazel switch was awesome. It might be the crux of the route so far. Rock! I'm a bit scared to come out of my nook here because the rock just came right past my head. You can see you now. Hopefully this is the last pitch and it will all be over soon. The most important part of climbing the wall for me is just staying in the moment. You know, focusing on each task at hand and not thinking about the scale of the wall in front of us, not thinking about what might happen. Really, you just have to focus on, can I do this move? And just take it one move at a time all the way to the top. I think I'm getting somewhere. Sweet mercy. I've never been happier to get in the top of something. We're so over it. It's, it's horrible. I'm so psyched. Yeah! Yay. Alex, is this the top? Yeah! Oh, I'm so psyched! Yeah! <laughs> we made it to the yeah. summit! <laughs> I was like, please say we get to the top. We're at oh, the top nice. of the month. High fives! Yeah! Oh, this is amazing. Alex is a bit of a difficult character to be friends with sometimes, but there was nothing but good vibes between us the whole climb. That is so cool. Oh, that's this is special. Like, this is the coolest summit I've ever seen. Can we stand right on the top? Yeah. It was a really nice experience for us to share, and I think we're going to be better <laughs> friends because we shared this experience. Woo! Yay! Summit! Please don't break your ankles doing this now. Climbing with Hayes on the wall was a total pleasure. Summit! Of all people, she was well equipped to handle the challenges of that wall. <laughs> Definitely pretty satisfying to get at the top. We came up a terrifying wall yeah. situation. You know, for literally two days, we were climbing on terrible rock. 
neither of us has ever climbed anything that's so consistently scary. But it did feel like we sort of got away with something. You know, it's like you can only roll the dice like that so many times. It's the kind of climb that you do only if it matters enough to you. Oh, wow, and look at the Dogar Jensen. Oh, that's a crazy looking glacier. It was pretty incredible to get to the true summit of the peak and then suddenly see one of the biggest and most active glaciers in Greenland shedding these enormous icebergs into the fjord. It's like one of those things that you kind of have to see to believe. I've analyzed the information from the time-lapse cameras, and to my surprise, I've discovered that the Dokard Jensen is still quite stable, moving at the same speed it was 10, 20 years ago, more or less 25 to 30 feet per day. I don't know exactly why, but somehow, the Dogard Jensen glacier is still quite stable while the rest of the Arctic is collapsing around it. And to me, this tells me that all is not lost, that some glaciers are trying to hold it together and trying to stay strong. But for how much longer? The Dogard Jensen is the exception. If we don't act now, we'll lose the Arctic as we know it and will be forced to live in a much more challenging world. <laughs> hey! Congratulations! Welcome back! Oh, thank you. Oh, well done, though. <laughs> Hearing that the Dogar Jensen is a relatively stable so far is interesting and encouraging. It's nice to know that some glaciers haven't begun a terminal decline yet. But I think that I just have a natural, sort of an innate optimism around it. You know, like a lot of the environmental issues that we face, if we resolve them, it also vastly improves the human quality of life. We have this amazing opportunity to make the world better. We just haven't quite chosen to yet.